Now I just inserted swatches. I'm not impressed by the swatches. I'm not. It's a lot lighter of a texture than I anticipated. I thought it was gonna be a lot like thicker. That was very, very easy to blend. Like incredibly easy to blend. Whoa! Wow. It's cute, you guys. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if it's not your first time here, thanks for coming back. So today I am doing almost a full face of Flower Beauty. I just uploaded a video not too long ago about the brands I wanna try in 2022. Flower Beauty was one of them. So I just decided to pick up some of the products that I was interested in trying. I didn't get everything in the line because like I said, I don't need a lot of the products that they offer. I'm trying to like edit my purchases a little bit, but I'm so excited to show you this look that I created. What do you think? Spoiler alert, I really like it. So yeah, if you wanna see how I got this look and all of my thoughts on Flower Beauty, just stay tuned. Everything I talk about in this video, I will link in the description box down below. Okay, as you can see, I need to put makeup on my face, so let's do it. So as I was looking on the Flower Beauty website, this was the only eyeshadow palette that I could find. Now I did see some in store at CVS, but they are ones that I've seen before people using. I kind of already have an idea for what people think about it, but this one I had literally never heard of. So it's called the Forbidden Fruit Eyeshadow Palette. It says, let's play decadent plums and shimmering golds complement pops of peach and magenta to give eyes the most alluring forbidden look. These 10 shades deliver ultimate color payoff, blending seamlessly for an effortlessly wearable or playfully bold look. Now I just inserted swatches. I'm not impressed by the swatches. I'm not. The mattes look okay. The shimmers look atrocious, especially considering the Desert Lights palette that I have, which I've mentioned on my channel before, this palette is absolutely amazing. It's just a six pan full of shimmery, like silky, almost cream shadows. They're so metallic, they're so sparkly, they're so incredibly beautiful. I don't know why they wouldn't put this formula in here, at least one of the shades, but these like actual metallics, they look really lackluster, swatched. But I have to put them on my eyes, okay? I'm not gonna judge it too much. The packaging of this, is, I mean, a cardboard packaging, it's nothing crazy, but again, one thing, I'm not trying to be negative, I'm just trying to be honest. One thing I don't love about this is they have this plastic thing on the end that you have to insert to close the palette. If you don't, this hangs open. And I will tell you right now, I'm either gonna break this or lose it. Something's gonna happen to it, I already know. The color story in here is cute. I mean, it's a warm tone with berries. It's nothing like crazy exciting, but I do like that it goes from light to deep. Like they do have this dark brown to deepen up the outer corner. So I appreciate that. A lot of these shimmers, quote shimmers, are really like almost satin. And they actually like, these two have shift to them. I wish they would have executed this like this because I think those would have been really cool shades. It is what it is. So I'm going to kind of do a look with this palette. You're gonna watch me in fast motion. For me, it's probably gonna take a long time. And then I will come back and give you my thoughts. I've already primed my eyes with the Urban Decay Primer Potion. Let's go.
Okay, so wasn't as bad as I originally thought it was going to be. Can't always judge a book by its cover. I will say the mattes were pretty nice, actually. They were pretty easy to blend. This guava shade, the first shade I used, had a lot of kick up in the pan, like a lot. And this very last darkest shade, Blackberry, was a little bit harder to blend out. It is the darkest color and it is like a dark, dark, dark purple. So it's not that surprising for a drugstore brand, but actually it wasn't that bad. This citrus shimmer shade was a little chunky. It was not the easiest to use, but it's not the worst metallic shadow ever. I much, like I've said a hundred times already, you guys know that. I much prefer these, but I don't hate how this came out. It's not, it's not terrible. Would I recommend this? No. You could get a ColourPop palette for probably the same price for a way higher quality in my opinion. And like I said, this isn't even sold in stores. I don't think it wasn't in my store. This was just online. It's not like the convenience factor of going to the store to buy this. I'm gonna try to use some more of the shades as I go on and you know, do my lower lash line and whatnot. So we'll get back to this in a second. But right now I am going to put on liner and mascara and lashes and I'll be right back so we can do the complexion. Three hours later. <sighs> I had a really hard time putting on my lashes. <laughs> it was a struggle. The thing I was probably the most excited to try was or is the flower. I don't have to say flower. Everything's flower. The Get Real Serum Foundation. The claims on this are, it's medium buildable coverage, natural radiant finish. Conceals and smooths skin with a natural looking finish infused with antioxidants and hydrating properties to help nourish and care for skin as you wear it. Our weightless formula doesn't settle into lines and feels light as air. Skin looks younger and healthier. Well, that sounds like a plan to me. I got the shade Nude L3. I think it's gonna be okay, I'm hoping. It is very, 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 very liquidy and it separates a lot. So you have to like constantly shake it. If this is your first time here, my skin is like all over the place. It really was for a long time normal. Then it turned very oily. Now some days it's very dry. So I'm gonna call myself combo. I will say if I wear a foundation the whole day, I will get oily in the T-zone. So my T-zone is usually oily and the rest of my face is kind of normal. I'm excited to try this. Now, typically with a foundation like this, I'd prefer to put it on with a brush, but I don't have any clean foundation brushes right now. This is my sign I need to clean my brushes. This is your sign you need to clean your brushes. So I am gonna use this. I mean, I wiped off on a towel any remaining residue, like nothing's coming off when I'm wiping it on a towel. So I am gonna use this on half of my face and I'm gonna use a sponge on the other half, just with like a super liquidy formula. I feel like the sponge is gonna soak up a lot of it, but that's okay, we'll try it anyway. I put on basically just a moisturizer underneath, underneath, <laughs> on top of my skin, and I put my Becca under eye brightening corrector under my eyes. I'm not gonna put any primers on because A, I don't really wear primers very often, and B, when I do, I wear the Milk Hydro Grip, but this saying it's a radiant finish, I don't wanna add too much hydrating underneath because I feel like it will slip around a lot. So, okay, so I'm gonna put this on the back of my hand. Yeah, very, very, very liquidy. Okay, hurry, hurry, hurry. Ah! Okay, so I am going to use the brush first. I'm gonna work it into the brush. Wow, that's crazy. It's like super watery. The shade match looks pretty good. It's a little light, but that's okay. Now I have a lot of like acne scarring. It really didn't cover up anything. So let's add more. Okay, so this half of my face has the foundation and this half doesn't. Um, I wouldn't call this medium coverage. I did try to build on it and I don't really feel, feel like it built up to medium coverage. Like you can still see all my redness. You can still see all the spots on my skin. So I would call this light coverage. And then I would also definitely call it very radiant. Like look how shiny the side of my face looks compared to this side. So that worries me, I'm not gonna lie, that worries me. Now I am gonna powder it though, so we'll see what happens when we powder it. 
I already foresee this not working with a sponge, but guess what? We're living on the edge. We're gonna try it. Okay, and this is the side with the sponge. Um, I don't feel like it gave much of a difference actually. And just my own opinion, I don't love like super, super dewy foundations like this. They just do not last on me at all. They tend to break up pretty quickly, but I will have to let you guys know how it wore on me. I plan to wear this all day. I plan to film another video later. So I am gonna have this on my face for a little while. Hopefully it looks pretty good so I don't look crazy in my next video. The color match is pretty good. I'm really proud of myself for that. I would say if you're, if you've got really dry skin, you probably are gonna like this and you want like a light coverage, something for every day. I probably wouldn't wear like this crazy of an eye look with this type of skin, but I mean, whatever. We're just trying things out today. All right, and the next product I'm excited to use that I've heard so many people talk about is the Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer. I got mine in the shade Fair which I believe is the lightest shade. Weightless formula for a second skin feel crease proof. Introducing Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer, a soft focus blurring concealer with high performance coverage. The weightless formula instantly diminishes the appearance of imperfections, fine lines and signs of fatigue for a flawless luminous look. Our creamy texture blends seamlessly like a second skin with a lightweight feel. The eye area is visibly brightened with a soft touch of light. If you've been here before, you know that I'm so picky with concealers. I have very, very, very creasy under eyes. Like when I smile, I get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of lines under my eyes, a lot. I feel like luminous concealers don't work for me. They tend to crease. I like using these to mix with more drier matter concealers, but these on their own really honestly never work for me, but I'm gonna try it, okay? Because you just never know. I could be proven wrong. So I am gonna apply this to my under eyes. I'm gonna start with a small amount first. We're gonna blend it out with my sponge. The color looks really pretty. It's definitely a very, very thin texture, which I didn't expect. I thought it was gonna be a little thicker. Okay, so that's one layer. It's a lot lighter of a texture than I anticipated. I thought it was gonna be a lot like thicker. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit more on. Okay, it's definitely already starting to crease already, right under my eyes, which is fine, which is fine. But I am going to set my entire face. Ooh, no, actually not yet. I have the flower, we know it's flower. I have the blush balm, which I'm sure you've all heard of this because it's been hyped up for a really, really long time. And I've wanted to try this for so, so, so long. They make these things so hard to open. I get it. They don't want people stealing them at the drugstore. I get it, but it's like you need an engineering degree to open these things. Okay, so I got mine in the shade Nectar, which is like this peachy color. I'm actually just first gonna try to blend it out with my fingers and see what happens. Put a little bit on the back of my hand. It's a lot thicker than I thought it was gonna be. I thought it would be as liquidy as the foundation. That was very, very easy to blend, like incredibly easy to blend. And I love the color. It goes really well with my lid color, don't you think? And I just love a peachy blush for my skin tone. I feel like it just awakens me and alivens me. I'm actually gonna try a sponge on the other side. So I'm gonna take like the side of my sponge that I haven't used yet, just on the side, and I'm gonna try to pounce it with the, with the sponge. It's definitely a faster application with the sponge because you can cover more space of your face faster. And that was very easy with the sponge. Very, very easy. Oh, I love that. And a little went a long way. Very impressed with that so far. Now I'm gonna set my face and I'll be right back. Okay, so I set my face using the Ilia Soft Focus Finishing Powder, which is like one of my favorite powders ever. And after setting my face, I do not like my under eyes at all. I don't think it looks good at all. It's already creased. It looks crepey. It looks gross. 
but I think I would like this as a mix and concealer. But I will say you guys, I really like how this looks now that I've set my face. Like it just makes my skin tone look even. It doesn't look overly dewy, but it doesn't look dry. I think it's really pretty actually once it's been set like this. So I don't know, I'm excited. And then one time I talked about wanting to try Flower Beauty on the brands I want to try in 2022. And one of you guys mentioned the bronzer. So I picked up the Heat Wave bronzer. This is a luminous bronzer. I got mine in the shade Sunrise L1. Sun Kissed Glow, Luminous Finish, Enhance Your Glow with Heat Wave Bronzer. Our marbleized formula blends effortlessly for a warm, luminous look. Matte and shimmering powders swirl together for a lit from within ambient glow. Whoever writes these descriptions, they deserve a raise. Now it's so interesting looking at this, like it doesn't look warm at all to me. It looks quite cool toned, but we're gonna try it. Once again, I have zero clean brushes, but I'm just wiping off the excess on this duo fiber brush from, whoa. Wow, it's a lot. Wow, that's a lot of kickback, you guys. Going around the perimeter of my face. That's pretty. Put a little too much on my forehead. <laughs> Look like I have a leather forehead. Oh shoot. It's very pigmented. Like much more pigmented than I thought. Yeah, I need to do some damage control on my forehead here. When something says luminous bronzer, it kind of scares me that it's going to be like shimmery or glittery, but this doesn't look shimmery or glittery at all. And I really, really like the tone. It's actually a lot deeper than I thought it was gonna be. I thought this was gonna be way too light, but it definitely looked like I've been out in the sun. <laughs> wow, I really like that. Thank you guys for the suggestion. Okay, and then this is just a little bonus. I picked up the Flower Pots powder blush and I picked up the blush brush. Kelly Gooch has talked about this on her channel and I saw it and I love these little tiny precision blush brushes that are fluffy. I love them. They're like my absolute favorite because I like to really control where I put my blush. Some blush brushes are way too big or too dense. You know, depending on the formula, if it's a super pigmented blush, I don't want a super dense. I'm trying to get glue off this. Very Milani-esque with the flower imprint. This looks like a matte blush and it looks like it's gonna pair absolutely perfectly with the cream blush. Tap off a lot of kickbacks, so I feel like it's gonna be pigmented. Pop this on top. Love this brush. Yep, went overboard. <clears throat> so pretty. This kind of reminds me of the Patrick Ta blush that I love so much, the Do We Know Her blush. That one's a little more like apricot. This one's more peach, but... I feel pretty. Gorgeous. Now, one thing I was really excited to pick up was the highlighter. That was the other thing that you guys had really suggested to me when I had asked what your favorite products from Flower Beauty were. And I thought, I swore that I picked it up when I went to CVS, I put it in my cart, but I don't have it. So I guess I didn't. But you know what? If you just saw my last video, things I'm not buying this year, Highlighters was one of them, so I didn't need it. It's best that I didn't get it, but I've heard it's really nice. I just can't attest to that because I didn't pick it up. I thought I did, but I don't need it anyway. I'm just gonna do my brows and I'll be right back to finish up the eyes. One thing that I had talked about in the past was I was looking for a drugstore cream liner for the waterline. This one is the Eye Brightening Forever Wear Eye Lighter in the shade Moonstone. I'm hoping this is pigmented. I'm hoping that it is going to stay in my waterline because I've got super watery eyes. Oh yeah, that's pigmented. Wow. Wow. That's really nice. It's almost white. That's even more pigmented than the Patrick Ta one that I bought. So, okay. So I'm gonna let you know if it lasts in my waterline, how long it lasts and everything. Stay tuned. Let's try out a few more of these eyeshadows, shall we? So what do we got? I'm gonna take this dark shimmery purple, the pomegranate, and I'm gonna pop this on my lower lash line with like a small flat brush. I'm gonna wipe that brush off. But I'm gonna take this like purpley shade, exotic. This looks like it's a duochrome, but when I swatched it, it was not 
It was not too good, but let's put that now a little bit more to the inner part. Then I'm gonna take a flat brush and I'm going to take lychee, the bright kind of inner corner shade. I'm gonna take that. I'm not gonna wet it first. I'm just gonna use a dry. I'm gonna pop that in my inner corner. It's pretty. I'm actually gonna take it a little bit on my lower lash line into that purple. It's actually really pretty. I'm also gonna pop that under my brow bone or on my brow bone, whatever. It's cute, you guys. And last but not least, we're gonna end with the lips. So this is the Perfect Pout Moisturizing Lipstick. I got mine in the shade. They make the print so small and it's iridescent. Shade is called Blossom. It looks like this really pretty deeper nude color. I like the packaging on this. It looks literally like a bullet, which is interesting. It's not very on brand. When I swatch this, it feels like a very, very, very moisturizing lipstick. Almost like one of those slippery, like slightly less pigmented type of balmy lipsticks. So I'm gonna use my itty, my little itty bitty Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Wherever Walnut. I'm just gonna line the outside of my lips. I accidentally just filled my entire lips in just cause I'm so used to doing it. Apologies, but I think that's probably better because I feel like this is super sheer. So I'm gonna pop this on top. It doesn't have a scent to it. The color is beautiful, gorgeous. I love these types of lipsticks because A, they're very comfortable and B, it's basically a lipstick and a gloss in one. It gets that glossy effect without me having to pile another lip product on top. I love the color. Now, if, if you guys watched my last video about things that I am not buying and lip products was one of them, I bought this before I made that video. Just defending myself here. Okay, I'm gonna brush my hair and I'll be right back. What do you guys think? I think it kind of came out cute. So let me do like a quick speed through and give you my thoughts. Now, of course you guys, this is just a first impressions. I am gonna continue to use these things and let you know as I use them more of my deeper thoughts. These videos are just more for like looking at applications. So let's start first with the eyeshadow palette. So the Forbidden Fruit palette. This actually was better than I thought it was going to be upon swatching. Do I recommend it? Honestly, I feel like ColourPop's formula is better and at the same price point. So I don't, I don't know. If this color story like really, really calls to you, you know, I don't know that you'll be really disappointed, but it's definitely not the best drugstore palette I've tried. I like the look I created. I don't regret buying it, but did I need this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So those are my thoughts. <laughs> this though, I would suggest, I mean, this one I do recommend the Desert Lights. These shades are so unique and beautiful and sparkly and metallic. And I've already mentioned them before on my channel, but I just wanted to reiterate, these are special. These are pretty, these are worth the money. The other one, meh. And then for complexion, this foundation, you guys, it's pretty. Like I said, once I've set it, it looks very pretty on the skin. It's very lightweight. It's a light to medium coverage. Like when I set it and everything, I feel like it did provide a little more coverage. The color is really pretty. Like I said, I got the shade Nude L3 if you're interested. I'll have to let you guys know how it wears on me, but it's pretty. The concealer, I mean, I'm super picky, super, super picky. I know a lot of people love this concealer. So if you don't need a super matte concealer, you probably would enjoy this, but I need something a little bit more like non-crease proof, but I do plan to use this as a mixing sort of thing. Now I did get the shade Fair and I, wouldn't consider myself fair. I'd consider myself light. So if you're any fairer than me, this may be a little too deep for your under eyes if you prefer like a lighter color under your eyes. So just be aware of that. The shades run a little dark. The liquid blush is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Was really easy to blend out. It wasn't super, super duper pigmented like the rare beauty ones. You have to be really careful with those. These ones were a little bit more user friendly. I love the color. They have several other colors. Gorgeous. The powder blush, gorgeous. I love a matte blush, but it doesn't look dry. It looks smooth on my skin. The color again is beautiful. The blush brush, I'm so happy I picked this up. It's quite small, okay? It's quite small. Like, let me show you. This is my Sony Kashuk one, and I thought this one was small, but even in comparison, it's even smaller than my Sony Kashuk one. And then I have like kind of a standard bigger one like this. 
So you can see it's definitely a lot smaller than that. So it's a small detail. Like if you have small cheeks, a small face like me, um, this is a really nice brush. The bronzer is gorgeous. Again, the tone of it is not like it looks in here. To me, it looks a lot of, a lot more neutral, like really beautiful. It was easy to blend out. Now it was incredibly pigmented. So you need to be careful or you're gonna have look like Leatherhead, like me over here, but pretty. Now this only comes in two colors, which is absolutely ridiculous. So that's a shame. But if you're my skin tone, you would like this. This eyeliner, I've been looking for this for years. Where has it been all my life? I'm glad I found it. It's more pigmented than the Patrick Ta one right off the bat. Will it last? I don't know. I mean, it looks gorgeous so far. Last but not least, the lipstick is beautiful. So I love these like glossy, balmy lipsticks. They're comfortable. They're easy to throw in your purse. Just boom, boom, boom. You don't need a gloss. It's gorgeous. Love the color. The only thing that really was disappointing to me was the concealer and the Forbidden Fruit eyeshadow palette. So that's it for this flower beauty video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give this a thumbs up if you did and leave a comment down below about any of these products. Have you tried them? What are your thoughts on them? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And if you aren't already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe before you leave. I do upload videos weekly, both beauty and fashion videos. I wanna thank you so much for watching this video today. I will see you next time. Bye.